Our next little lecture is going to be about girdle machines. Girdle machines are self-referential, universal problem solvers making provably optimal self-improvements. And in a certain sense, they formalize the informal remarks of I.J. Good of 1965 on an intelligence explosion through self-improving super-intelligences. The Gödel machines are inspired by Kurt Gödel's self-referential formulas. Maybe you know that in 1931 Gödel became the very founder of theoretical computer science. He introduced the first universal coding language, which was based on the natural numbers, on the integers. And uh, this universal coding language allows for formalizing the operations of any formal um, uh, axiomatic um, system or any digital computer in um, axiomatic form through numbers. So the storage basically um, is uh, represented in form of integers. And Gödel used that language to represent both the data, his data were axioms and theorems, and programs. Uh, operating on the data, such as proof generating sequences of instructions manipulating the data. And he then famously constructed formal statements that, um, that um, talk about the computation of other formal um, statements. So um, one statement talking about sequences of operations that generate new statements. And he even had these famous self-referential statements, which um, basically imply that they are not provable by any computational theorem prover. And that's how he identified the fundamental limits of mathematics and of theorem proving and of computing and therefore also of artificial intelligence. So Gödel back then was the guy who, who showed the basic limits of AI. Um, what he did had enormous impact on science and philosophy of the 20th century. And furthermore, uh, much of early artificial intelligence in the 1940s, Zuse and, um, uh, and others, uh, to the 70s, was actually about theorem proving and about deduction in Gödel style through uh, expert systems and logic programming. A Gödel machine is a computer that rewrites any part of its own code as soon as it has found a proof that the rewrite of the code is useful, where a problem-dependent utility function and um, the properties of the hardware and the entire initial code are all described by axioms, by axioms encoded in an initial proof searcher, which is a a piece of software which is also part of the initial code of the Gödel machine, which in principle can be rewritten. So what does this proof searcher do? The proof searcher systematically and also in a certain sense efficiently tests computable proof techniques. A proof technique is a program 
whose output is a proof. So starting from axioms, you generate lemmas and new um, um, theorems until finally you have some theorem that you want to prove. And the Gödel machine generates um, such theorems until it finds a theorem that says the rewrite that I'm proposing here is indeed useful because um, after the rewrite you will get more reward per time than before. So this initial software um, which includes the proof searcher keeps searching for theorems until it finds a provably useful computable self rewrite. And I was able to show that such a self rewrite then must be globally optimal. That is, there are no local maxima since the code first had to prove that it is not, it is not useful to continue the proof search for alternative, maybe even better self rewrites. No, implicit in the proof is the statement that there are no alternative self rewrites that are even better than what I have so far. And um, unlike previous non self referential methods based on hardwired proof searches, uh, the Gödel machine not only uh, boasts an optimal order of complexity, but can uh, optimally reduce any slowdowns hidden by the standard asymptotic optimality notation, the, the O notation, uh, provided that the utility of such uh, speedups is provable at all. Now, um, one might um, question, does the exact business of formal proof search make sense at all in an uncertain real world like this? And the answer is yes, it does. Uh, all we need to do is we just need to insert into the original software of the Gödel machine uh, with the proof searcher the standard axioms for representing uncertainty and for uh, dealing with uh, probabilistic settings and with uncertain worlds. Uh, in fact, the original write-up of the Gödel machine really addressed this issue and was about expected rewards. You want to maximize the future expected reward in your limited lifetime. That's the objective function and that is the initial utility function. And um, since utility can be defined as an expected value using axioms and everything that you need to reason about expected values, um, we are all fine. Now, human machine learning researchers also routinely prove theorems about expected rewards in stochastic worlds and uh, a machine equipped with a general theorem prover, um, like the Gödel machine, and the appropriate axioms can do uh, the same. So the Gödel machine, the proof searcher, is trying to find a target theorem which says that a piece of code that will rewrite the uh, Gödel machine, including the proof searcher is good and this target theorem seems to refer only to the very first self change which may completely rewrite the proof search subroutine which is part of the original software of the Gödel machine. Now the question is doesn't this make the proof of the global optimality theorem invalid? What prevents later self changes from being destructive? However this is fully taken care of. Uh, the proof of my global optimality theorem shows that the first self-change uh, executed by the system will be executed only if it is provably useful in the sense of the uh, present utility function. Um, if it is provably useful for all future self-changes that uh, might happen in, um, uh, through uh, additional computation of the Gödel machine. And these future self-changes are influenced, of course, 
for the, um, through the present self-change, which is setting the stage for the future self-changes. But um, it's all good, it's all taken care of. This is actually the main point of the whole self-referential um, setup. Now, the Gödel machine implements a meta-learning behavior. It learns how to learn in a certain, even optimal, mathematically optimal sense. But um, what about a meta-meta, and a meta-meta-meta, and a meta-meta-meta-meta level? Uh, the beautiful thing is that all the meta-levels are uh, automatically collapsed into one single uh, um, level, one single meta-level, if you will, uh, because any proof um, of a target theorem automatically proves that the, um, that the corresponding self-modification is a useful basis for all future self-modifications uh, affected by the current one. All these worries are uh, taken care of in recursive fashion. Is the Gödel machine computationally more powerful than a traditional computer, such as, a, such as a Turing machine? No, of course not. Any traditional uh, computer, such as a Turing machine or um, a post machine or um, any other reasonable um, uh, computer, can become a self-referential Gödel machine by just loading it with a particular form of machine-dependent um, software. Software that is uh, self-referential and has the potential to modify itself. But Gödel machines cannot in any way overcome the fundamental limitations of computability uh, and of um, theorem proving, which, um, which uh, were first identified in 1931 by um, Kurt Gödel himself.